So um, I would say a therapy therapeutic approach I thought was very underutilized that has been very useful as again, I've learned more about this disease um, is hormonal therapy. Um, and especially for women, um, really in the sort of mild to moderate category, um, kind of hormonal rebalancing, um, either through oral contraceptives or spironolactone can bring people to really nice um, remissions that are really managed with very low medication doses for a long period of time. Um, and so that, that and uh, you know, I think historically this disease, um, there were not a lot of female dermatologists who were treating it, who really understood kind of all of these things. And so it wasn't a lot of surgeons were treating it and they just didn't kind of catch this until we started really doing it. And it, it is a really important tool. I'm very excited to hear that. So that actually was one of my questions for you because what we are seeing among our members is that they will talk about how you know, every month on the month, they will start to have a flare and they'll have an area that's inflamed or extraordinarily painful. And it will, you know, seven days later, start to ease up again. And then they know that they're going to have the same problem uh, like clockwork. Um, yeah. So do you work with gynecologists ever or do you do the prescribing for the contraceptives? How does that, how does that work? Yeah. Well, again, it's um, sort of how people have viewed oral contraceptives in dermatology practice has changed a lot. Um, uh, and again, it used to be that, you know, you needed your pap smear every year. Or many dermatologists didn't feel comfortable using them. Um, and that's completely shifted. Both how we monitor patients and people's comfort with level with this is completely changed. So, you know, if I have a patient who I think that a oral contraceptive is appropriate for, I'll ask them about their pap smears. I'll ask them important questions about, have you had a stroke? Do you have you know, clotting disorders in your family? Have you had migraines? Um, things that, would, are you a smoker? How old are you? You know, basic stuff. Um, uh, and then I'm very comfortable using them therapeutically um, in that setting, as long as I feel like, you know, we've got sort of the basis covered and someone else is monitoring their gynecologic care. If their GYN is doing the prescriptions, I'm also totally fine with saying, take this piece of paper with my suggestion to, <laughs> to your GYN and see if they like it. And if they're on something for a specific reason, like endometriosis, you know, then we'll have a collaborative conversation about it. And can you tell me a little bit about for women who are uh, thinking about getting pregnant or are pregnant, what do you find the, they can expect with their HS during that um, hormonal change? Yes, so we're just um, uh, actually finishing up some research on this as well. And it is, uh, you know, uh, the answer is not very satisfying in that some people get better, some people get worse, and some people don't change. <laughs> um, and it, what is also interesting is it does seem to be somewhat different where in the world and what uh, groups of people are being evaluated. So, you know, I think we're going to have to figure out wh which populations seem to be affected differently um, to reconcile those uh, pieces of data. Um, but that's kind of the short answer to it is that um, I think there is probably a larger chance of getting worse than there is of getting better um, at the end of the day. So that's really the take home message. And the weight gain in particular can be problematic for people because it increases the folds. Um, and so that can add to the problem. Um, postpartum, though, seems to be even more problematic. Um, and so, and more predictably problematic. And so, you know, when I have pregnant patients, I am making sure that I'm seeing them, you know, a few weeks after delivery um, when they're feeling a little bit better to make sure we we're on top of putting stuff into play, um, you know, especially since they're maybe breastfeeding, you know, what, uh, making sure we've got the right approaches for them. 